Good afternoon. Uh, welcome to the ordinance meeting of Tuesday, January 19th, 2016. We're here in Council Chamber A. Um, Will Rowan is here. G. Marie Katarina is here. Tom Hall is here and Tracy is here. Um, I have not heard from uh, uh, Councillor St. Clair. Can you hear me? Oh, Good to see you. I started. I'll come back to you. Oh. Well, the Take two. Take two. Do you want me to change out the name tag real quick? Sure. I wiped out your message. <laughs> but I thought well, the message was Oh <clears throat> be a fourth. We on We on? Uh oh. Test. Mercury's retrograde. <laughs> Something. <laughs> Did you recover from your uh bogey Yes. Oh. Yeah. Why did God, that was a lengthy case. <laughs> really? It was no. that bad? <laughs> I haven't talked to you. Are we good now? All right. I'd like to call to order the uh, Ordinance Committee. This is Tuesday, January 19th, 2016. We have in attendance Will Rowan, Councillor Will Rowan, Councillor uh, Bill Donovan, and myself, Jean Marie Katarina. We have Tom, uh, Tom, I can't talk, Tom Hall and Tracy also. We have um, approval of minutes from September 19th. Are there any questions on the September 19th minutes? Councilor Rowan, you weren't even here. <laughs> I didn't see anything. I'm not uh, Move to defer. Yeah, I think you should uh, probably should. Should. Okay, <laughs> thank you. All right. So moved. <laughs> Um, next is a brief discussion with planning and code regarding a definition of commercial vehicles as it pertains to parking of the same in residential driveways. This came to my attention from <coughs> Councillor Piazzo, who is also in the audience uh, today. Uh, if I could ask um, Mr. Bacon to give us a brief presentation on what the issues may be. Um, thank you, uh, Councillors. Um, Dan Bacon, Planning Director. Um, Brian Longstaff was also planning to attend, but he was out sick today, so but he prepared the memo um, to you that we're going to be discussing today. Um, so he sends his regrets. I'm sure he'll be continuing the conversation as this moves forward. Um, this is around the storage of commercial vehicles in kind of residential settings. Um, and Currently, our zoning ordinance in residential zones doesn't allow more than one commercial vehicle, commercial vehicle, vehicle, can't say vehicle on a Tuesday, uh, to be parked or stored at a residential property as an accessory use. Um, but actually, in the rural zone, allows two. So it doesn't allow more than two in the rural zone. Um, and this regulation has actually been in place since the mid-1980s. And so I don't have any firsthand um, knowledge of the, the details of the discussion in the mid-90s. Um, I sense is that this is really intended to allow for a homeowner who might be self-employed, who drives a, a commercial vehicle like a light pickup or a van or other type of kind of tradesperson's type vehicle um, that might be commercially registered. Um, and again, this regulation has been in existence for uh, essentially 30 years. Uh, we don't have a lot of issues with it, at least in the in the um, in my tenure. Um, but but now and then, now and again, there can be uh, challenges with it where a homeowner might have two commercial vehicles that are stored in, say, a driveway or at a residential property. And that's, I believe, why this has come up um, over the last year or two, where there's um, a residential property in the R2 zone, one of our um, suburban residential zones and areas, and uh, a homeowner's had two kind of lighter duty commercial vehicles. I think both have... Um, In fact, I'll distribute a picture. I believe okay. this is the, um, the two vehicles in question. Right. 
Um, and uh, someone else in the neighborhood, a, a butter neighbor, has had some concern around um, compliance with, again, this, this standard in the zoning ordinance. Um, so we were kind of asked to look at this, to, to look at um, the current state of the zoning ordinance as it relates to this and, and offer some ideas or opinions as in planning staff and really to kind of start the conversation. So we prepared a memo for you um, that kind of outlines uh, the current regulations and then begins to um, consider, provide some guidance around um, what could be changed. And uh, right off the bat, something we, we noticed um, was that there isn't a definition for commercial vehicle. Um, and I think our staff for, for decades now has kind of been using a, a practical approach to what a commercial vehicle is. And in most cases, um, you know, we've allowed for, you know, the lighter duty kind of commercial b vehicles that would be customary with a tradesperson or, you know, uh, someone who might be working out of their house and using a, a commercial vehicle. That could be anything from a car that fits right in up to um, another, you know, a small to mid-sized truck that you'd typically see in a residential area that that might have a roof rack or might have might be a van, um, you know, that type of thing. I think that's historically what we've considered as a commercial vehicle. Um, but um, a step the Ordinance Committee could take and the Council could take is to, to define the commercial vehicle. Um, so we provided a, at least a draft at what a commercial vehicle could be to help provide guidance to uh, our staff as well as homeowners about uh, what we mean by commercial vehicle. Something else that we've, we're offering for your consideration is an update to that parking and storage standard um, and to allow for um, up to two um, commercial vehicles um, in residential uh, districts if they're accessory to a residential use if they're the small to, to kind of mid-sized commercial vehicle. And what we've tried to do here is to put some parameters around that being, you know, a commercial vehicle with um, two axles and having a gross vehicle weight of 9,000 pounds or less would be allowed as accessory. And the 9,000 pounds um, probably needs a little bit of scrutiny. I mean, that's, that was our initial take at what kind of a small to mid-size truck, you know, um, pickup truck, van, uh, commercial vehicle that you would typically see in sort of parked in a residential area. Um, but I don't know if that's an exact science. So I think we should mm -hmm. continue to look at that, whether it's 8,000 pounds or 10,000 pounds. You know, I think that's the range you might want to talk about. Um, to put it in perspective, I think um, Suburban, which is common residential car is about seven to 7,500 um, pounds, you know, 7,000 pounds, 7,500 pounds. So a bit bigger than that would be you know, 9,000 pounds. Um, but to, so those two would be allowed under this proposal in a residential zone, accessory to a residential use. So that means um, two residents presumably would you know, need these vehicles to, to, to go to their, to do their work during the day. Um, and they would need to be the vehicles of the homeowners. So that I think one of the things to guard against is allowing a number of commercial vehicles at a residential property beyond what's reasonable to be used by those that live there. If, if you have a bunch of commercial vehicles at a property, that's really inviting employees to come to the to the neighborhood to the house to then deploy from there which i think is potentially you know not necessarily consistent with a residential neighborhood so that's proposed um as a change and um, now that we would have a commercial vehicle definition um what also is proposed is to to not allow for these vehicles that are larger than than the two axles and you know 9,000 pounds to be accessory to a residential use. You know that would be heavy equipment or larger dump trucks or you know um, larger commercial vehicles that 
really aren't customary in residential areas in, in most cases. Um, that said, in our residential zones and our rural zones, there are some non-residential uses where those things are customary. You know, we allow a lot of farming in the rural part of town, which is considered a residential zone. So this isn't proposed to um, prohibit tractors or heavy equipment or dump truck, you know, larger commercial vehicles that might go along with, a, with an active farm that wouldn't be affected by this proposal. Um, and it wouldn't prohibit uh, commercial vehicles that might be there to serve a golf course. Or other, there's a variety of other uses allowed in our residential and rural zones that we wouldn't want to affect by, by this language. So this tries to expressly uh, treat those differently. Um, so that's kind of where we're at with the proposal, if, if that makes sense, um, where we'd update the language to instead of one lighter commercial vehicle, for a lack of a better term, uh, allowed in a residential zone right now. We'd allow two under this proposal, which is the reason it's before you. Um, but to prevent sort of larger commercial vehicles or heavy equipment from cropping up in residential zones, we'd be specific about an edge there where you go from, you know, a smaller commercial vehicle to something that isn't customary um, at a household in the residential zone. So that's kind of where we're at with, with this and really looking for your thoughts, feedback, and, and direction. We can continue to refine <coughs> it in this direction or we can change direction based on um, where you guys would like to go. Uh, thank you, Mr. Beek. And um, Manager Hall, do you have anything else to add to this? I, I don't. I have more questions that may be thought-provoking, perhaps. Uh, I just. Maybe I'll just throw it out there and we can see right. if any of it resonates. Uh, I certainly appreciate the direction staff's going, and I, I think it makes a lot of sense. I, I do wonder about kind of the unintended consequences. Uh, by virtue of this, we're, we're going to make it unlawful or illegal to have vehicles that are presumably lawful today, right? So someone's living there. Oftentimes I can think of... Uh, uh, utilities have their staff take the vehicles mm -hmm. home at night so they can respond to the scene, you know, a CMP truck or mm -hmm. I wonder about a school bus. I don't think that happens in Scarborough, but there are undoubtedly conditions that are lawful today. Would they be grandfathered or would the person have to move or find new employment? <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, it's a, good, it's a good question. I mean, I don't know how many circumstances there are I, like I that. Don't either. I don't yeah. know how we could determine that before. Yeah. I, I just wonder if they would be grandfathered. That would be a way to say, okay, once we know about them, you're allowed to continue, but right. nothing new. Yeah. So I just throw that out there as a potential fly in the ointment. <laughs> mm -hmm. Thank you. Um, just for the purposes of the audience who can't see the picture that we see, um, the two vehicles that have been the subject of continued complaints by, <coughs> excuse me, in a neighborhood, one is... Uh, I don't know anything about trucks particularly, but one is a, a pickup truck, uh, Silverado pickup truck with a rack with painting ladders and the painter's name on it. And the second truck is a van uh, with the the name of the company on it uh, with a, I guess that's a bucket. I would say that's a bucket that they probably use when they do painting up high. Mm -hmm. um, so they aren't, you know, I'm not, I'm not looking at, Steam shovels or <laughs> no. or anything it, like that. That's the subject of this particular complaint, just so people right, in the audience, I mean, who are listening that at That issue rose understand. to the level of actually Brian Longstaff issuing a notice of violation uh, and, and seeking corrective action. The workaround was this gentleman found a, an alternative location to store one of those vehicles, was not convenient to him, um, yet the con complaints persist. I get many of them, I forward them on to Brian. Um, and I think it's a matter of him stopping at home to drop off a kid and all of a sudden there's two vehicles in the yard. So um, I, I wouldn't want to legislate based on this one kind of isolated right. situation. I, we're not aware that it's widespread. Um, but by the same token, what was being asked for here doesn't seem terribly unreasonable either. Right. I, I would suggest if you wish to entertain this, we ought to make both parties aware that you're taking this matter up. I feel yeah. obligated to make them aware and have them provide input to you. 
And I, I would agree with that. Um, Mr. Cayazzo, do you have anything that you'd like to add? Because um, I know you brought this to the attention of ordinance. Yeah, if you could go up there, please. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. Um, so a little bit of background. I, I mean, I, I also don't think it's, you know, justifiable to legislate on one issue in particular. Um, when the concern was raised to me, I did review the ordinance. It did seem to me that it had been some time since it had been reviewed. And I think to me, looking at it um, from the outside view, it seemed uh, reasonable to expect a, a, a service provider like a plumber or a carpenter or something to have uh, a, a pickup truck in addition to, let's say, a work van or a utility type of van. You see a lot of the cube vans or box vans that are out there to, to store their equipment in. Um, in. In terms of the definition of commercial vehicle, I think that's, uh, you know, certainly something that can be addressed. I mean, I think, um, you know, maybe something as simple as uh, if it has a combination plate on it or something. I don't know if that's one criteria that we could look at or something. Hmm. Um, uh, uh, and then to Tom's point about the larger equipment, I think the key in that issue or a CMP truck or somebody's uh, work truck or a bus, I think uh, Dan's comment of the vehicle needs to be um, a vehicle of the homeowner. I think maybe that could be a workaround. It's, you know, obviously CMP owns the truck, but it's a requirement for employment or a, a school bus or something like that. Uh, that might be an, an optional workaround, I don't know. But um, I, I think looking at it, uh, it kind of without knowing the situation, the, the ordinance itself does seem to be maybe in need of a review. I think there's probably more than one instance where there are multiple local private contractors that have a couple different trucks on their on their property. I don't think it's unreasonable. I, I think this probably just kind of raised to light based on a complaint and an enforcement issue um, causing us to go back and look at the ordinance again and saying, oh, maybe that is a reasonable approach. So um, I certainly do think that everybody should, all the involved parties should be um, made aware of what's going on. Uh, certainly give them an opportunity to speak, but I, I really wasn't bringing this forward as a result of that one action. It was more of a looking at the policy and saying, okay, it does kind of make sense maybe to bring this up again because I'm sure there are other situations that, that may exist in town that either aren't being enforced or are creating difficult situations, if that makes, mm -hmm. if that makes sense. So, so thanks for the time taking okay, it up today, and I'm always available for follow-up. All right. Thank you very much. Um, <clears throat> Can either of my fellow counselors have anything to add questions? Because I see this as, as an opportunity to have a discussion about a couple of things. Number one, is this something we even want to talk about? And number two, if so, what direction do we want to take with it? You want to go first, Will? Or? Sure. I mean, I, I think, so the, the first question I, I guess I would have was, is, is there a problem with the existing ordinance? Um, I, I I'm not sure that, um, you know, in, in order to accommodate a, a, a contractor that, um, you know, it is, it is something of, a, of an eyesore for an individual in the neighborhood to have a, what looks like a parking lot out, um, in their neighborhood mm -hmm. driveway. Um, the, um, and then I'm also, to Mr. Paul's comment, um, very concerned about something like a long haul trucker who's used to, you know, drive, parking his rig in, in his driveway and now would be unable to do so under the proposed. Um, so I don't know if, if maybe we wanted to explore the avenue of allowing, you know, of, of further dividing commercial vehicle to say a, a passenger type vehicle like a car that happens to be a, a, con, uh, a, um, a commercial vehicle as well that we would allow, you know, in addition to your work van, a pickup truck. Um, in which case it would kind of cover cover this one, but prevent you know that that long haul trucker or you know two two of these bucket trucks from sitting in somebody's driveway. Um, yeah, I don't I don't know if I have any more rambling <laughs> thoughts beyond that, but Mr. Dan, uh, Dan, did uh, did you consider whether uh, a special exception provision would be able to deal with the kind of special circumstances? of uh, someone having to have uh, a second vehicle uh, in their driveway. I mean, I think people are, are yeah, interested in not having <coughs> multiple large commercial vehicles as their neighbors. Right. Uh, we talked about it briefly, you know, at the staff mm -hmm. level when we were generating this memo and this initial um, 
uh, piece. Um, that's certainly an option if you wanted to go from one to two, or if you wanted to have one over a certain size, you know, allow something like written here kind of by right. You're permitted to have smaller. If you want to go larger, then you need to go through a special exception process. That that could be done uh, mm -hmm. for sure. That might be reasonable. Um, the thing we also talked about is lot size matters a lot. Mm -hmm. Um, where, you know, whether it's a school bus or a uh, tractor trailer truck that's on two acres or four acres and it's screened, then, and it goes on to a main road, then that may not be a big deal. If it's on an acre or less and it's served by a dead end subdivision and they're driving in and out every day, that's a different context. You know, that's a different situation. Um, so, you know, I think you can look at it in those ways and try to set up standards along those lines, or you could say you're allowed to do smaller, depending on the number you guys decide, and then you can go larger, but it's a higher bar through special exception. That could be a, that could be a approach. It, it's the unintended consequence. It's, uh, it's that we can't think of every single circumstance that would say that one's fine but this one is a terrible idea mm. that, that's the dilemma code finds itself in they, mm. they've got a bright line in the code and I, I think staff has mm. felt as though this doesn't seem all that egregious yet it is a technical violation and <coughs> therefore produces a notice of violation I, I wonder if this helps or maybe complicates but in this case at least one of those vehicles, the pickup truck, I believe, is his daily driver. It's his personal vehicle. Right. He also uses it for work, and he's got his name advertising his business on it. I wonder if that's a way to carve out not an exception, but to allow an additional vehicle, if it's you know not exclusively commercial, that's your daily, it's your personal vehicle too, or a passenger vehicle, or he doesn't right. have commercial plates on it either. Mm -hmm. I mean, I don't. I, I, I think he did initially change it. Okay. Because I know uh, from my own experience with dealing with people through real estate and, and whatever, I mean, I, I'm sitting here looking at this picture in particular, and if it didn't have the name of the company on either of those, people wouldn't complain. Or maybe they would, because I've been to houses where you've got mm, four people living in the house, and all four of them drive a big pickup truck. So... I think in, in this know? particular case, you've got the you know the van with the the bucket on top is pretty clearly you know not someone you're in, something you're going to drive around in every day. But the but the pickup truck certainly is. Yeah, I mean, uh, so and, and and this is my own ignorance on or uh, instead of ignorance, I'll say lack of interest in sizes of trucks. <laughs> I mean, nine thousand pounds. What, how big a truck is that? Yeah, I'm looking at Brian. I'm looking at Dan. I'm looking at anybody who knows the answer. I had that question also. I think that's maybe like an F-350. I I don't. I mean, if I you have a double yeah, cab, because I, I know yeah. guys with double cab tundras and this and that, and they, that's their personal vehicles. Yeah. Right, right. But they also use them for work. I, I mean, I don't think just sure. Yes, yeah, go ahead. Um, Absolutely. I, I mean, I think the I think there are clear definitions of light duty trucks, mid trucks. Yeah. Uh, heavy duty trucks. I think you could go to O'Connor, GMC, or any dealership in town or in the region and say, please give us a definition of what we consider a light duty truck or a heavy duty truck or something. I think that's, that's fairly easy to come up with those kind of parameters. Um, I, I really looked at this again to, to, to Tom's point of not really trying to to legislate a a a, 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 a grievance or something, but I, I, looking at tradespeople, uh, many of them do have pickup trucks right. and especially the type of vehicle, like right. a plumber or an electrician. Or usually the box truck, if you're working out of your home, you right. can't have a or anything else in there. Right. So it seems reasonable to me to... Oh, uh, thank you. <laughs> Um, it, it seemed reasonable for me, looking at the ordinance, to, to try and get a better definition or to allow that. Because, I mean, obviously, the, the flip side of limiting that is you don't want to restrict trade people or people from having their own businesses. If it's necessary right. for them to do business, you want to allow that. To right, so, absolutely. Um, I mean, I, I, think, I, I, I think we could go into those definitions fairly easily to me. 
I, I would be more concerned about, um, you know, I think, again, to Tom's point of, we've got a situation here that's not necessarily egregious, but it is a violation. So, I think this just one happened to come up because somebody complained about it. I'm sure if we drove around town enough, we'd find multiple violations of the same ordinance. It just hasn't risen to the level of whatever reason of somebody not complaining about it. So, I, I think we could tighten it up a little bit, however we do it, to to try and kind of meld both towards for lack of a better word. I mean, I think I, I think the definition of the weight are a good option. Um, you maybe could even do an either or, perhaps, you know, two light duty vehicles or one larger vehicle if you were concerned about a long haul trucker or something. Mm -hmm. um, but but to me, I think that situation exists probably more than the heavy equipment situation exists. Kind of just from observation of driving around, I don't see a lot of rigs and backhoes and things parked in people's residence. I see a lot of that in town. So. Mm -hmm. I think from a practicality standpoint, I think it would be good to address, some way, somehow address this so that it, the intent falls in line with the definition of the word. Mm -hmm. um, I'd like to just throw something out there, and this is a devil's advocate thing. Um, what if we change it? Uh, give me the give me the upside and downside of if we change the ordinance to be that no more than two commercial vehicles, just to any any district without a definition. I mean, I'm just throwing that you mean out. mean anything that's registered commercial? Yeah. Because now it's, you know, you can only have one in certain residential areas. What if you just made it two? Everywhere. So I guess I'd be concerned with uh, instead of one long-haul truck parking in your neighborhood in somebody's driveway, you've got two. Yeah, I don't know. That's yeah. what I'm asking, yeah. I think staff really would like a definition because now... Okay. The f everyone at this table in this room may have a different definition because it has the name of the company. Is that the defining characteristic or right. sort of the tag on the right. vehicle? So I think it would be helpful to staff to have a clear right line in, in, by way of definition, whether it is or it isn't. Okay. So at the very least, we'd recommend some improvement in that regard. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Now That's what I heard from staff. The long haul trucking example, I, <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I haven't scrutinized every neighborhood in town, but I'd, if they're out there, they're hidden well, or they're <laughs> on large lots, and I'd, so I guess I don't necessarily encourage opening up an issue that doesn't right. currently exist. I mean, in some ways, without a definition of commercial vehicle, you can also discourage some types of commercial vehicles. That's not the best approach, but um, specifically allowing larger commercial vehicles where we don't have a problem around that. I don't know that we necessarily want to attract that <coughs> issue if in certain contexts. Again, I think it comes down to setting. If there's really small lots, I think it would be mm. impactful to neighbors if you have a piece of equipment that makes a lot of noise and takes up a lot of the road and is impactful when it Maybe it isn't an issue on a major road or on a larger property. So I'd, mm -hmm. I just encourage caution around how large a vehicles we want to specifically allow. I think it's right now it's gray enough that we can discourage that if we wanted mm -hmm. to. Mr. Donovan. Dan, did you think about uh, the circumstances involving campers or RVs? Good question. Um, <clears throat> I don't know if they're commercial vehicles or not, uh, but obviously you will from time to time be oh. driving down the road and you'll see a big RV parked, uh, and am I correct that you can park a vehicle as close to the sideline of a property as you wish? There's no setback for parked right. vehicles. Right. Right. Uh, and so a person with a truck that he uses as his personal uh, uh, vehicle that also has his business name on it because he also uses it. That person is in violation right now because those are, that'd be two in an R2, R3 zone. Mm -hmm. So that's, yeah, we not didn't that's not uncommon. Right. You're right. No, and we didn't focus on that yet. No. Um, 
Boats also. Did you think about the boats have a standard in the ordinance if there, if a boat's over a certain size, it needs uh, to meet setbacks because it could be imposing to neighbors. Right. I think that size is maybe 24 feet or you know some. Uh, See that that can be a problem to neighbors mm -hmm. when they have a very large camper or RV or something mm -hmm. parked right up against their yeah. property. Do, do, do those require a different form of registration, paper registration? Mm -hmm. Because you could restrict from by registration. I know a a warm-up truck or rig has a different type of registration requirement than a light-duty pickup truck. So that may be an option to look at as well based on the type of vehicle registration. I don't mm -hmm. know. That's an option. But I think RVs are separate. Mm -hmm. They are separate. Right? I do think so. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah. Dan, I also had a question about the uh, next to last line in paragraph 14 as proposed, where it says must be owned and or used by the occupants of the residence. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I was wondering whether uh, owned and used uh, by the occupants, because you use occupants as plural, so it could be one of them owns it and the other uses it. And that's what I think the intention is. Mm -hmm. uh, when I read that, the red flag I got was that somebody could own it, but a third party could come and get it each day, right. and therefore it's being parked there for that employee's convenience. And that's what we're trying to avoid. Mm. Yeah, exactly. So I didn't know if owned and used solved that problem as yeah. long as you're using the plural occupants. I think that's a good change. Uh, so I think my hesitation to that would be if you were the employee of someone and you you know, I didn't own that van, but I drove that van as a commercial vehicle. So right. used and not owned would be okay. That, that but I think owned and not used is the problem. Yeah, mm -hmm. it does create a problem. No. If if they don't own it, but they use it. So that t that would take a little noodling. Yeah. Yeah, it sounds like we have a few questions. Yeah. What a tangled web we made. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, no, it never uh, is. We friend. survived okay never for 30 is. years. So. <laughs> <laughs> um, Welcome to Dan's world. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Well, what's the pleasure of the uh, ordinance committee uh, for ne for next steps? Uh, I know personally. I mean, this hasn't been looked at in 30 years. You know, 1986. Which scares me. That was 30 years ago. No, no, well, I, I would <laughs> think that uh, that we've had some good discussion about it. Dan, I think, and Tom could confer on those aspects that seem to require further investigation. Okay. And I don't, Dan, do you see any reason to um, hasten the review, or is this something that we can be deliberative about? I don't think there's any time sensitivity to this, no. I think it's more a question of do you want us to proceed with this in kind of a, you know, a stepped manner, and we can do that if you want us to come back with a new version. Um, I, we can look more closely at what is the threshold, you know, what's a small to mid-sized commercial vehicle with 9,000 mm. pounds or if 12 or whatever that is. We can get some... Um, clarity around that. I know Brian did look at that. I was he drafted this, and I'm pinch hitting, so he may feel good about that number. Um, but I'll check with him, and mm -hmm. we can come back to you on that. Um, and we can continue to massage the owned and used language. I think mm -hmm. the, maybe the bigger question we'd have, and we can discuss it at the next meeting if you're not ready for it, but is do we want to allow the larger, you know, how we treat these larger vehicles that we perhaps allow today but aren't widespread in town and if we want to allow for those um, in here or if we want to build a process to allow for those if that's a special exception or if you know how we want to treat that I think it's a, maybe the biggest question I think we certainly can come up with a mechanism to grandfather any that are out there with some evidence that they bring to us pre language or pre changes I mean that that's pretty common um, but sort of the treatment of those larger vehicles um, perhaps is the biggest piece of this. Mm -hmm. Will, your thoughts? In terms of how to proceed, I, I, I think referring it back to, to Dan yeah. and staff is appropriate at this point. Uh, Dan, uh, what are the zone, uh, residential zones that have the smallest lots? 
Um, Eastern Village, Dunstan Crossing, Higgins Beach. And those, <laughs> so those go down to 50 by 100 yeah. uh, lots. Yeah, I'd say Eastern Village, Dunstan Crossing have lots similar in size. Similar in um, size. Pine Point, of course, does to a degree. Um, you know, other than those areas, um, you know, the Maple Ave neighborhood mm -hmm. has quarter acre lots. There's in Dunstan, there's some neighborhoods with quarter acre lots, um, you know, 10,000 10, square yeah. feet. It, it, you could, you, when you start to think about the microscopic size of some of these lots, yeah. and you start to say, well, let's put two commercial vehicles on it, you start to say, well, that, that, those, for those lots, uh, that's really why re the rural residential was easy, because mm -hmm. they were larger lots and they were in a rural setting. Yeah. Uh, now we're dealing with much smaller lots at the small end, mm -hmm. uh, so it's a much more compact environment, and so that strikes me as opening a can of worms. Right. Mm -hmm. And in the rural zone, though, we're now requiring, in many cases, um, conservation subdivisions, so the lots are actually, mm -hmm. not that they're small, they're not quarter right. acre, they're acre, um, and there's more open space, so the town's trending towards smaller lots, albeit in the rural zone, they're still an acre versus a quarter acre, you know, where the rural zone before was two acres or more. Um, and so, you know, and that's maybe where you could have some acreage thresholds for, you know, larger vehicles. But, you know, I don't know. Um, mm -hmm. It's, it's. Mr. Kaya. Yeah, I, I just wonder if some of the smaller lots too. I mean, there's no park, street parking in Scarborough anyway, right? So if it doesn't fit in the property, then the driveway or a some other location that's reasonable, I guess. I mean, it's a far term I know, but I, I think that might diminish some of those concerns for the smaller lots because if you can't. They on the, in the driveway, you can't park it on the street anyway. So that by, just by default, will limit you to storing multiple vehicles. Mm -hmm. I would say. Okay. Yeah. That's kind of all that dodge around, if you will. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. People get small real lots, creative. Oh, I know that. Small <laughs> lots, just by, just by nature, tend to have that smaller, you know, one car and two car garage, mm -hmm. short, yeah. mm -hmm. a shorter driveway. And if you can't fit it on the property, you can't store it, you can't store it on the street. Anyway. Mm -hmm. Just let me share an example. In my neighborhood, I don't know what the lot size is, but diagonal from me, and this must be on a on-call basis, kind of it's less than daily, maybe monthly. I, you know, whenever my neighbor works for Clean Harbors, oh, you're right. um, and he clearly needs to respond from his home to a scene, which is an emergency situation, and it must be a requirement of his job. Mm -hmm. On occasion, he'll bring home a truck, and I can assure you it's well in excess of 9,000, right. at mm -hmm. least three axles. It, it's a mm -hmm. big truck. Now, he's got a long enough driveway that he yeah. backs it in, and it sits in front of his garage. It's not terribly offensive, but that's the sort of unintended consequence that I mm -hmm. think it may happen more frequently than we appreciate. Right. Um, and I, I, I guess you know, it's one of those things, if a tree falls in the forest and no one hears it, we're not getting complaints on these things. so. They may be, we may be speculating a bigger problem than really exists there. Maybe what we need is just the definition of commercial vehicle that would take care of uh, take take, you know, not not to again legislate for one particular case, but that would suggest that just because that that truck is painted huh. doesn't make it a commercial vehicle. Right. Oh. Hmm. It does. It's not. It doesn't have a commercial huh. plate currently. Um, Right. It, at the very least, that would be helpful that we had right. a definition of that. Yeah. Or it's just, and it's just daily. Right. My yeah, suggestion daily would be that we move this until the, our next meeting time in the month from now, because there is no rush. Um, other than we got people calling. Um, but, you know, it is what it is. Um, and ask Dan and his staff to come back, having heard some of our thoughts, on that, I like that definition of commercial because that's what I've heard from Dan and staff is, well, we don't even have a definition of what commercial is. So even if we just got that done, as this ordinance committee would be helpful, I would think. I, I don't want to make the discussion about this particular incident, but right. that's what gave rise to the conversation. Right. I'm not sure if it would be helpful to your 
discussion, but at least we know pros and cons, or mm -hmm. there are two opposing views of that particular situation. I'm not sure if it would be at all helpful for you for you to hear from them if they're willing to come and yeah. express their concerns rather than us speculating what. Yeah. I think that would be helpful. I yeah. think it'd be helpful too, mm -hmm. and I, you know. Since we're talking about them, I'd have them come in and talk to us directly. Absolutely. Well, it's not like I, I'm not going to subpoena them to come before. Right, you know. right. But if they wish <laughs> well, to go, maybe we <laughs> make them aware that the conversation is happening and invite them to come yes. and offer yeah. comment. Yeah. So, Mr. Manager, do I need a motion? To I don't. Nothing. Don't just, think just, just a no, discussion. Just discussion. Okay. Matters carried over to the next. Matters carried over to the next meeting, which will be when, February 16th. <laughs> okay. February 16th? February 16th, 4 p.m. Any other items that you can think of that we should? I, have, I haven't heard of anything. I've asked people. So the, there was one uh, mention. I think it, at one point, uh, Councilor St. Clair mentioned uh, the review of uh, fees and assessments oh, yeah. that, that is overdue, but okay. She also mentioned at the goal setting session about something about parking. And she was going to fill me in on what I asked her what was meant by that. Does anyone know what is meant by Maybe. that? Maybe. I'm uh, guessing it was a holdover on the uh, lower Point. end of Pine Point Road. Uh, there was no final resolution to that. And okay. It was kind of more of a wait and see attitude. The business owners were quite clear that they liked the opportunity for on street parking. Right. And, um, we, and we also discussed that they're going to be doing some work. Right. Down there, right. so, so why bother? Speculating that that is yeah. what she's talking about. So that's simply deferred mm -hmm. until uh, the work that's being done on Pine Point Road is completed. Yeah, and the other, only other one I'll just mention, and it's incumbent on the folks in the community to come forward, but the, the church down in Pine Point off Church Street, forgive me, I don't recall the name, but um, there's some... To Methodist Church? Yes, it's across from the fire station yeah. and the yeah. historical society right. there. There's currently um, there's currently parking that's allowed on that uh, on the end of Church Street, and right. it's used really around church services. And uh, some members of the church, not all, are interested in posting that no parking. Um, so we've asked them to kind of sort out their differences yeah. and come forward as a group, and that's kind of where it is. So I just okay. flagged that as a potential parking issue that okay. may come your way. Mm -hmm. We have a motion for adjournment. So moved. Seconded. All those in favor? We'll see you in February. Good. Thanks, Dan. Thank you. Yeah.